According to Forbes, America has 735 billionaires worth a combined $4.5 trillion. But how many billionaires are there really? When Forbes publishes their list, they add a small qualifier that almost nobody notices. There are 735 listed billionaires in America, because nobody knows how many there really are. Forbes employs more than 50 employees in 16 countries to compile their list. According to their methodology article, they use public financial records, interviews with employees, rivals, attorneys, and they attempt to validate the numbers by contacting the billionaires directly. Some cooperate and give Forbes access to their personal finances so they can report a more accurate number. Number, but the magazine admits that most don't. But on the other hand, um, you know, these billionaires often don't want you to look under the hood, and they're constantly finding clever ways and different ways to filter their money, move it around, try to hide it, or, or you know, just coming up with just new. Um, you know, tax strategies. Much of the list is an estimated guess, but there are also a lot of billionaires out there that will never show up on the list even though they should. The list is really a, you know, a list of individual billionaires rather than, you know, widespread family fortunes. And the same thing for people asking about Vladimir Putin or, or things like that. It's hard to break out where money is so intermingled with the government. One group are the crony government leaders using their country's central bank as their own personal credit card. But I think there is another group that is even more interesting than that. Forbes and Bloomberg, who both get a lot of online attention from their billionaires list, have behind closed doors admitted that they have no way of keeping track of the most common type of American billionaire. In an interview with the New York Times, Kerry Dolan, the editor who oversees the Forbes team responsible for the annual list, gave a profile of a billionaire that they would never be able to find. She told the Times that it's someone who quietly sold a stake in a business for, say, $250 million in the 90s and then invested it well. That's it. That's all there is to it. $250 million is a big exit, especially back in the 90s, but it wouldn't have made the news unless it was a well-known household brand. Most good businesses of this size are boring and only sell their products to other businesses. As a former investment banker who has worked on a lot of these deals personally, I can tell you that $250 million exits happen every day, and sometimes it's not even the founders who are walking away with all of the money. Silent early investors in a private company would only show up on the paperwork in the part that tells the acquirer where to send the money. If a person took all of their earnings from a sale in 1999 at the height of the dot-com bubble and put all of it into the market and then spent a meager $1.2 million a year or $100,000 a month on themselves, they would now be worth $3.3 billion and nobody would know unless they wanted them to. There are flashy individuals that want to show off their wealth, and there are billionaires that couldn't avoid attention because the companies they founded are too well known. But most billionaires are invisible to everybody but their close family, their accountant, and the IRS. There are three very important reasons why these billionaires do this, and two fascinating strategies they use to make sure they stay under the radar. The first reason that most billionaires try very hard to stay off the Forbes list is because of the problems that come with public notoriety. Lottery winners are routinely harassed by people begging for money, filing frivolous lawsuits, and family members pitching them a business idea over Thanksgiving dinner. The average lottery winner is seven times more likely to declare bankruptcy than the average American, and the public attention they get is a big reason why. Not only is getting chased for your money annoying and costly, it can be dangerous. Known wealthy people are the logical targets of kidnappings, burglaries, and blackmail. High-profile business leaders and celebrities employ personal security, but it's difficult for these teams to always cover all their family members. Personal security is also expensive and inconvenient, because they need to travel, work, and live with you to remain effective. A nice relaxing life enjoying your riches can quickly turn into another job of managing a security team. Executive protection agents serving Bollywood's biggest stars can earn more than $300,000 a year. If nobody knows who you are or what you have in your Schwab account, then all of these problems can be avoided, and that's just the first reason. So it's time to learn how money works to find out why most billionaires don't show up on the Forbes list and what tricks they can use to hide their wealth. This week's lesson was sponsored by Blinkist. Blinkist is a powerful app that distills the essential ideas from over 5,500 nonfiction books and podcasts, enabling you to absorb critical insights in just 15 minutes. Imagine the knowledge you could gain in a fraction of the time. How often have you spent hours on a book only to discover that it's not for you? Blinkist eliminates that frustration by giving you the key ideas before you read a book or after to refresh your understanding. 
With Blinkist, you can explore a vast library of topics at your convenience. When a title truly sparks your interest, you can then delve into the entire book and maximize your learning potential. I recently discovered Gamification for Business by Sune Gudiksen and Jake Ginlove, which reveals how companies use gamification to address organizational challenges and boost workplace performance. The concept was so interesting that I decided to read further and learn more about it, and books like these are often how I piece together ideas for my videos. Blinkist helps you optimize your time by giving you the ability to understand key ideas before dedicating hours to reading a book, making your learning journey more efficient. With Blinkist Spaces, you can create a space with friends or family members where you can recommend titles to each other. All members of a shared space can access all titles in the space with or without a Blinkist Premium subscription. With content tailored to enhance various aspects of life such as parenting, communication, and teamwork, Blinkist is the essential tool for personal growth in today's fast-paced world. Don't miss the chance to unlock your full potential. Get a 7-day free trial and 25% off Blinkist annual premium subscription by going to Blinkist.com forward slash how money works. The second reason that most billionaires try very hard to avoid being included on the Forbes list is because they don't want to be seen alongside the same people that normally get included in the magazine. A lot of people that get articles written about them in Forbes paid for the privilege. Magazine subscriptions are down, and selling online ads doesn't make nearly as much money as selling physical copies did back when it was the most popular way to read these publications. Magazines like Forbes have had to look for alternative revenue sources, and doing paid articles is a lucrative option. People with C-suite career ambitions will get their PR manager to pay the magazine a few thousand dollars to write a fluff piece about how they reshaped corporate culture at their last company. For a few thousand dollars more, they can be included on a list like the Forbes 30 Under 30. Most of these lists are comprised of people that paid to be there, with a few big names like Sam Bankman-Fried and Martin Shkreli smattered in to give the list some… credibility. It was once an honor to be among Forbes' annual selection of 30 innovative business people under 30 years old. But in recent years, more and more individuals who have appeared on the list have ended up behind bars. Forbes reports on a lot of people that want attention because they are the easiest people to report on. Business people normally only want attention if it serves them in some way. Linking a Forbes article on your resume and LinkedIn profile could be a good career move and worth the few thousand dollars it costs. But for people who are already rich, it looks like they are desperate for attention. There is no way to tell who was written about in Forbes on their own merit, who was written about unwillingly, and who was written about because they paid for it. Established billionaires don't want people to assume it's the latter, so they just avoid media attention altogether. The other group of people that pay magazines like Forbes to write about them are scammers that make their money by selling online courses or cryptocurrency projects. If you watch some of their ads, you will see that they brag about being featured in Forbes or Money Magazine, which gives them a lot of credibility, and they can win over some skeptical customers. Most people will think that magazines like this wouldn't play any part in promoting a scam, but they would. Could it be that the Forbes 30 under 30 list really just attracts entrepreneurs who really don't have a legitimate business just to land on their list for social proof? The business people that billionaires work with every day know about this paid publicity, so for them showing up in Forbes is a mark against someone's business case. The third reason that most billionaires avoid publications like Forbes is plain old selection bias. The people getting featured in Forbes magazine are usually at the height of their careers or business success. After that, there is a long way to fall and not a long way left to go up. The people that are heads of major companies or members of high-profile families can't avoid it, but anybody that seeks out attention knows the risks, and does it anyway because they like the attention. People with these character traits will long-term be less likely to manage their wealth and their business effectively. They will be more likely to take large risks and be overly assured in their own business skills. People like Kevin O'Leary would be a lot wealthier today if they had just invested their early career winnings into the market and then did nothing else. Someone's financial success becoming public information can also turn a lot of their customers off their brand. People like to support small family businesses over soulless corporations, but if they find out that the owners are already billionaires, their customers' loyalty will not be as strong. On the expense side, a known billionaire will also be offered more expensive options anywhere they go. They will get overquoted by contractors and get judged for negotiating discounts. There are very few benefits of having one's wealth publicly known, and there are a lot of problems it causes. Smart billionaires understand this, and smart billionaires are more likely to stay billionaires. So you have just become a billionaire and you want to stay completely anonymous. Excellent. I have clearly taught you how money works, so here is what you are going to need to do. If your money is coming out of the sale of a business, make sure it is a private sale. 
These days, launching your company onto public markets through an IPO is only really necessary if you are going to be the next Facebook or Amazon. And if your company is that big, sorry, it's already too late for you. A private equity exit or acquisition from a bigger company is quieter and easier too in most cases. In terms of the deal don't have to be public record in the press release, so there is nothing for the journalists at Forbes to dig up. Once you have secured the bag, you should then invest it broadly in the market and avoid putting too much money into any one company. If you own 5% or more of any public company, you must file what is known as a Form 13D with the SEC. 13Ds are public for anybody to see because the SEC wants investors to be aware of who the biggest shareholders are in a public company. If someone with more than 5% of the company's shares needed to sell quickly, they would push down the stock's price significantly. Investors should pay close attention to who a company's top shareholders are, because if it's the people that will be in a bad financial situation personally, it will be bad for the stock price even if the business fundamentals are good. As a billionaire that values their privacy, you would be best served to limiting any individual investments to no more than 4.99% of the company's shares. This has the additional benefit of making sure you are diversified as well. Another way the SEC can snitch on you to Forbes magazine is through a Form 3. This must be filed if you own more than 10% of a public company, or if you are a company officer like a CEO, CFO, or chief legal counsel. A Form 3 also needs to be filed if you are a company director, so if you want to stay hidden, don't take too many of these positions. You can have a billion dollar portfolio, and only the holdings you have in the companies you are a director of will be public. So if you want to sit on a few boards, you can, but it will put your name out there. The other way that your wealth becomes public knowledge is through lawsuit discovery. If you get sued, anything that gets turned up by the lawyers is entered into public record, except for in the rare circumstances that evidence gets sealed. The best way to avoid lawsuits is to avoid attention. So as a new billionaire that's trying to stay out of the public eye, you are already doing everything right. Billionaires will also take advantage of holding companies and trusts set up in states that have strong asset protection and privacy laws like Nevada and North Dakota. If you live outside of America, you should consult my video on the Panama Papers to find out how the global billionaires get it done. Once you have the accounting set up, the next step is to just avoid the ostentatious displays of wealth. You can still live in a beautiful home, just make sure it's in a private area and that it's not the most expensive in the area. You can still drive a nice car, but don't post about it all over social media. You can still fly private, but don't put a logo or name down the side of your plane. Your best defense is being too boring to write about and for your actual wealth to be too difficult to verify. If you ever get a call from any of these publications, just laugh quietly and tell them that you wish you were worth a billion dollars and that you would prefer that they didn't imply that you were because that would be materially inaccurate. If they have no way to definitely verify your wealth, they won't risk adding you. Now, the first step in this is obviously becoming a billionaire, and I don't have the best answer for you there. But to find out how some influencers are trying to get there, go and watch my video on influencer businesses and why they are a lot harder to turn into billions than any other business. A special thanks again to Blinkist for making it possible for everybody to keep on learning how money works.